Hello friends, in this lecture we are going to learn about circuit switching network and packet switching network. Okay, so this is a very common question that is asked in many interviews. So what is circuit switched network and what is packet switched network? So first and foremost, so circuit switched network, so when two people are talking, okay, and when they are communicating so there is a dedicated path dedicated resource for the data communication and it is continuous flow of data but here in packet switching the data is now discretized and it is in a form of a chunk known as datagram so for example in this circuit switching network let's say this mobile is talking to this machine okay so there is a dedicated path this router to this one then to this then now i come to this one let's say this one then this one this router and this router okay so then to this machine so this path is now dedicated so all the data will be flowing through this particular path and all the resources the link bandwidth are now dedicated so the link bandwidth switch capacity they are reserved for the call so there i'm not sharing with anyone this particular link dedicated path i will not share with anyone it's just for me that particular connection so circuit like it's guaranteed performance but what you need so to resource for reserving the resource or the path and the bandwidth i need to set up the path circuit okay then there will be data transfer and finally i will tear the path okay so that resource can be released or something like that okay so call setup is required here now so what we have here is we have network resources for example bandwidth your link will have some bandwidth and i will give to a particular circuit okay a particular telephone call a fixed piece of that particular bandwidth so pieces allocated to calls, resource piece idle. And now what happens if we have the resources not being used, okay, then if it is idle, then there is no sharing. Okay, so that's not good in fact. So we have some link, okay, so there is a link. Four people here can connect to this link here. So four people are here, there are three here, okay. So now how many, so this is A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, okay? So how many, these are four people here, these three people are here. So for example, D can talk to G, D can talk to F, D can talk to E. So these are different circuits, okay? So there will be, if let's say B is talking to E, there will be a dedicated resource from B to E. So here four into three different calls can be made. So 12 particular communications can happen, okay? So this link capacity will be divided by 12, okay? For all the different communications, okay? So calls. But what will happen now if say B is not talking to E, then that particular resource will be not utilized, okay? So dividing the link bandwidth into pieces. So how can we do that bandwidth can be divided using frequency division. Okay, so or using time division. So let's try to see that. So first is frequency division. So we have a whole bunch of frequency here and there are four users. So now what happens? I will divide this whole frequency itself among the four users such that they all have their dedicated, if the frequency size is R, I have R by 4 dedicated to each one of them. Okay, so for example, this is the first one, second one, third one and fourth one. So all of them are divided 1 by 4th of the frequency and it's very fair also. But the thing is, if this is user 1, 2, 3 and 4, if 4 is not using the link, it will remain idle, okay? No one will be using it, so it's unutilized, which is not so good. But it's dedicated, and whenever he's using it, he will get perfect quality of service, quality of call. 
so that's the thing so this is based on frequency now i can also do the same thing the frequency is here but i can instead of dividing the frequency i can give them time slots okay a tdm time division multiplexing so now what happens is that the first user will be always the time will be divided into four slots and it will be repeating so let's say four second slots are there for all four and one second for each one of them so first second will be blue user second second will be green third will be yellow fourth will be pink and then again blue will start so this way also now if blue has data to send during this time period he will send but if at this time period he does not have data to send it will again be unutilized but here also your time slot is fixed you have dedicated resources so it is good in that sense so let's work out a numerical so that our concept can become clear how long does it take to send a file of size 64 into 10 to the power of 4 bits from host A to host B over a circuit switched network okay all links are this all links have bandwidth of 1.536 mbps okay so I have 64 into 10 to the power of 4 bits or it is 0.64 mega bit so this is my bandwidth okay then the link so no this is not the bandwidth this is the data size okay so this is the size of the file i have to send my link speed is 1.536 megabits per second that is at what rate i can send data but the thing is it's a tdm with 24 slots per second so now it is a tdm which means there are 24 slots in one second so there will be 24 users okay and they will be sharing those time slots so in one second one user will have 1 by 24th of the slot so his effective bandwidth will be 1.536 mbps by 24 megabits per second in reality now he has data is 0.64 mb so data divided by the rate will be the time taken to send the bits plus it's a circuit switched network so you need to set up the circuit which takes 500 milliseconds so the time is now it is 0.64 mb megabits by 1.536 megabits per second divided by 24 so it comes up and if you do this calculation it comes out to be 10 seconds okay plus you take 500 millisecond or 0.5 seconds for call setup so total 10.5 seconds will be taken for delivering this data okay now what is packet switching so here we saw that okay there was dedicated bandwidth you could use either divide the frequency or time division multiplexing but here each end and data stream is divided into packets so now i'm not sending the continuous data i'm dividing it into chunks called packets okay and these are discrete small packets are there user a b packets share network resources so now if there is a link okay and here you have a here you have b they have data to send here to c so let's say he has 100 mb of data and this person has 200 mb of data now let's say they have to discretize it means make packet small size let's say the packet size is 1 megabit so now this data will need 100 packets a will have 100 packets b will have 200 packets 
so now they are sharing this medium okay so there will be a queue here and they will be sending this data the packets will be now queued and queued in this particular queue and then it will be sent through the medium each packet uses full link of the bandwidth and each packet will be using the full link capacity bandwidth resources used as needed okay so now it will not happen that okay if a has no data to send and b has data to send he will use the complete bandwidth so in this sense it's better because now nothing is getting unused if you have data you can send it so this is good thing about it but nothing comes without any cons so this is the pros the con is resource contentions if both of them have data to send then you will have contention both of them will fight for this link so aggregate and might might happen that aggregate resource demand can exceed the capacity and there might be congestion lot of packets both are sending packet because no one is stopping them so the queue might become full there might be congestion and one more important thing is it uses store and forward okay so we will look them at the meaning of this one so first is statistical multiplexing so a and b have data to send link capacity is 1.5 megabits per second so there is a queue here and they will be sending their packet and they will be statistically multiplexed which means that if they have data they will be getting enqueued here and being sent so now if let's say so a and b packet does not have fixed pattern so it will not happen that okay this will allow one packet of a then it will allow one packet of b then it will again allow one packet of a then one packet of b there will be no fixed pattern in whatever way they are coming into the queue it will be sent like that okay so and in, it was in tdm they will would have been getting slots okay first second a will send second second b will send but here there is no such thing whoever is sending their packets they will be queued so store and forward as i said okay what is store and forward so let's say there is a computer here two routers are there now l is the size of data that needs to be sent and r is your rate at which or link bandwidth or rate of packet sending so l by r will be the time required to send this particular packet let's assume no propagation delay or zero propagation delay then it will come here and only when this router okay when it has received all the bits of this packet so it will store it then only it will start forwarding so how much time it has to wait so it the whole packet will take l by r seconds to get stored here because that is the time it will take to from the first bit to the last bit to reach here then when it is done so l by r time is taken this router will now start forwarding and it will wait here for l by r amount so it will receive the complete packet store it then forward it to this one so l by r is now utilized by this router again it will send it here and this will take again l by r so it becomes 3 l by r so that was the store and forward so for example if 7.5 megabits of size was the packet and rate was 1.5 mbps then 7.5 by 1.5 which is 5 seconds would have been taken for transmitting from one hop to the next hop there are three hops so it would have been 15 seconds so packet switching versus circuit switching so packet switching allows more users to use the network okay it allows more users to use why because now many users are there and by law of average probability not all of them will be using the link so this is the most important thing so there is a 1 mbps link now let's say each user uses 100 kb per second okay when they are active but we also have one more point that they are active only 10% of the time so what happens if we were allocating dedicated resource then 
वन एम बी इज थाउजेंड के बी पर सेकेंड वन एम बी पी एस सो नाउ वन यूजर रिक्वायर्ड हंड्रेड के बी पी एस सो ओनली टेन यूजर्स वुड हैव डिवाइडेड बाई टेन सो दिस लिंक कुड हैव बीन यूज बाई ओनली टेन पर्सनस बट द थिंग इज we also see that okay you are not active or you are not using the resource all the time so it tells that on average only 10% of the time we are active then it says bingo so now what it says circuit switching we would have just got 10 users but here <clears throat> let's say they have 35 users so what is the probability now it is asking that what is the probability that more than 10 users are active at once okay so let's try to see so 35 users are there and the probability of being active is 10% or 0.1 probability of being non active is 0.9 so what is the probability that 10 users will be active so it will be 35 choose 10 and 0.1 to the power of 10 and 0.9 to the power of 25 and what is the probability that more than 10 active users are there so if there are 11 active users 35 c 11.1 to the power of 11 0.9 to the power of 24 and you go on till 35 all the users are active so 0.1 to the power of 35 so if you sum this up it will just come out to be 0.0004 which is 0.04% is the probability that more than 10 users will be active okay so it's very less probability then we are sure that if less than 10 people will be active is the probability is then how much 1 minus 0.0004 so it will be very much more than 99% of the time less than 10 users are active so they will get their 100 kbps per second speed and you as a internet provider you will be happy that all 35 users are paying you the money and you are giving them also good enough service if you were using circuit switched network 10 users you would have got very less money and the quality of service would have been almost the same so great how when is packet serve switching best so there is bursty trap data you don't know when it is going to come resource sharing is there no call setup is required and it's simpler but it might have excessive congestion let's say if somehow 35 users gets active then there will be delay there will be loss and there will be big problem how to provide then the next questions come is how can we provide circuit like behavior in packet switching which we will see in next class so i hope you understand this thanks a lot if you like this video please subscribe to my channel